So on the restart, leaves his way, fires and scores! We get an attack, coming middle, from a free hit. Up, shot, score! It's around weed, off the bounce, shot and a score! Wow! Levine with some speed. Levine fakes a pass, Levine all the way is going to fire and score! Up top, Druin. He wants a shot oh. and he's got it! Wow! <laughs> Meanwhile, Arbusto, one-handed oh. shot is up and in! Got a penalty flag down. Skip oh. pass, sets up the board. And it's time to pluck a chicken. Nah. Nah. Whack. But a good one-handed scoop up. Oh, Roy! Oh, and then he lights the lamp! <laughs> Lowers that left shoulder and fires up the cougar pass. Look at this! Nice well, play. Fake shot by <laughs> Brunswick and then he drills it on his way to the ground. Chase. Extra feed. Shot! Yeah. Score! Game yeah. over! Well, hello everyone and welcome here to Nashua. Nick and ask this Roger how would do. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week. Presented by Bills Insurance. A battle on the border between two of the best teams in New England. Bishop Girton representing New Hampshire very well over the last several seasons. 
taking on another high-flying out-of-state opponent in Boston College High. The BCI Eagles, widely regarded as the best team in Massachusetts. The Cardinals of BG, of course, widely regarded as the best team in New Hampshire. So something has to give here as we head towards the state tournaments. Both teams looking for a final tune-up, so to speak. And two of the best teams, as we mentioned, two of the best programs, really, year in in year out in the region, Roger. Yes, indeed. And, uh, boy, I'm excited to, to see BC High play. I've, I've watched them play. We uh, At Bedford, we played them a few times over the years. Uh, solid program. Uh, they always have uh, a, a handful of D1 commits. Uh, in the case of this year's roster, they've got a, a couple of uh, uh, D3 commits as well to uh, Bates, Bowden, Gettysburg, some of the other uh, high-ranked uh, D3 schools as well. Uh, but, it, it, uh, yeah, this is definitely, uh, what, as you said, uh, regarded as uh, the number one team in Massachusetts, depending upon what poll you look at. Uh, but with the record that they have, it looks like uh, the only loss they have is to the number two ranked team, St. John's Prep out of Danvers. Uh, and, uh, yeah, they're right up there. So this should be a very good game, good quality, and you should probably see not a whole lot of substitutions for the most part in this game. BC High, 14-1. and one. You mentioned St. John's Prep. They're out of Danvers, and they faced Bishop Girton earlier this week. That one came down to the last couple of minutes before St. John's pulled away and captured a 12-11 victory over the Cardinals. That was BG's third loss of the season. Now 12-3 overall. The three defeats, of course, all out of state. And they did beat Hingham in the season opener in overtime. So a 1-3 out of state record. And they'll face Acton Boxborough next week to round out the schedule and round out, I guess, the final preparations before they look to defend their Division I state championship. Yes, indeed. And, and let's uh, throw this in there now that you mentioned Hingham, uh, one of their other losses. They're the third-ranked team in right. Massachusetts. Right. So you got uh, BG and uh, Coach Cameron going right after the meat of the Massachusetts uh, uh, talent pool out there. And uh, it, this ought to be a good one. And of course, the Cardinals did rebound after Tuesday's defeat against St. John's with a big win over in-state rival Pinkerton. 16-6 was that final back on Thursday night. So BG looking to make it two in a row with a win today on their home field. It's gorgeous out. Temperatures right around 70 degrees. Not really a cloud in the sky. The sun is out. Of course, a turf field here at Stello Stadium and a growing crowd. As usual, the Bishop Girton supporters, the parents, the students, they've turned out and they've decorated the place, as we're accustomed to seeing as well. A lot of green and gold along the sidelines and at the bottom of the uh, stanchions here. So a festive atmosphere as the Cardinals look to make a statement. BC High on the other side, trying to stay near perfect. They're 14-1, and one, and they have just one game remaining on their schedule. That's next week at Malden Catholic. So, again, both teams... We're going to feel each other out, kind of a barometer type of game, so to speak. And most certainly, each of these teams will leave here today looking forward to the upcoming state tournament. So, captain's meeting at midfield. BG going to wear their home greens today with the gold lettering. And, of course, BC High in the whites with the maroon lettering. Roger, some keys here both ways as we close in on the opening face-off at the top of the hour. Yeah, uh, it, as far as BC High goes, uh, a little bit of my research and scouting was uh, uh, turned up uh, Will Emsing is one of the uh, ones to watch out there. He is a Tufts commit. Uh, Tufts uh, just has rolled through much of uh, D3 playoffs this year, uh, so he will... Uh, He'll be uh, going on to a very, very good squad out there. Mm. Uh, so watch him. Watch also the defense on BC. Always very, very tough. Uh, very, very aggressive. And watch uh, their LSMs out there on the faceoffs. Uh, BG, they just got to play their game, I think. Uh, and, and they have been playing their game. And those losses that they've had have come right down to the wire each time. So as far as the, uh, the outlook, uh, you know, Competitive-wise, I think we're just going to see a toe-to-toe -to -toe game. I would not be surprised if this stays in single numbers. 
uh, because of the two defenses. Uh, and I also know uh, through uh, Coach Cam that uh, uh, Murphy is going to start today in goal, not Connerty. So hmm. uh, we'll see how that works out. But, uh, yeah, should be a good one. All right. When we come back, starting lineups, national anthem, and then game time at the top of the hour. A battle on the border about to commence here in Nashua. Bishop Girton and BC High next. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams so play with the best the new hampshire tomahawks showcase and development for college lacrosse visit newhampshiretomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com hey i'm chad the owner of new hampshire iphone repair we're new hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iphone ipad ipod and even android needs don't worry we're affordable reliable and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty and you know what the best part is no what we can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now has a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another lacrosse program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with the Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of the Bean Group today. At Dead River Company, the work we do is about more than just filling up tanks. It's about the everyday moments in your home. We're here to fix your heating equipment, so you have heat and hot water for moments like this. We brave the elements, so you're always safe and warm. Anytime, day or night. Because it's moments like this that we do everything we do. Dead River Company, it's not your job to worry about the heat. It's, it's ours. ours. Become a customer today, and we'll be there for the moments that matter to you. Closing in on the opening face-off here in the Gate City. Nick Anastas, Roger Howe with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Bishop Girton and BC High, two of the best teams in New England, possibly the best teams in both New Hampshire and Massachusetts, meeting here on the border. And as the teams again commence at midfield, you know, Roger, it's a big game when you have three officials, three of the best in the area. <laughs> yes. Converging here, Steve Small, Sean Murphy, Mike Toth. And, again, this game does count towards, of course, the overall standings, which may or may not affect the seeding for the upcoming state tournaments. Of course, Bishop Girton at 12-3. and three. Right now, the best record in Division I. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And looking to stay that way here against a somewhat familiar rival at this point, even though they're out of state, BC High. Yes, for sure. And uh, that's pretty much, uh, as you said, about the referees 
uh, as the college schedule gets uh, shorter and shorter because of the playoffs, we're going to start to see the Sean Murphys and the Steve Smalls and, and uh, James Riley and some of the guys that are in the District 1 uh, uh, NCAA uh, officials pool. So, uh, you know, that's good for us here in the uh, state and certainly good for the teams that are going to be playing in the playoffs. X, always a big factor in any game, of course. And two sophomores expected to handle the lion's share of the face-off duties. Of course, Will Vasquez, the starter for Coach Cameron. Cardinal sophomore took over for a long time. Face-off specialist J.J. Murphy, of course, Paulo. has gone on to greener pastures. And on the other side, Shane McDonald, sophomore set to take on Mr. Vasquez at X today. BG, thought they were going to wear their green jerseys. They warmed up in the green, but... Now, this is the, the new thing in, uh, they're in going lacrosse. With it's been like that for the last three years has been the vest. Uh, Syracuse started that a few years ago, and okay. uh, uh, it's become very, very popular. So it's almost like a... Like a um, uh, An extra a dry right, fit, yeah. uh, uh, you sure. know, sweat absorbing uh, T-shirt underneath or shooting shirt uh, with uh, with with the a vest sleeveless over. jersey over the top. Exactly. Right? Okay, so exactly. that's the look for Bishop Girton. Yeah, yeah. In the gold, and I guess the green sleeves and shorts. And meanwhile, BC High they warmed up in white. Now they're ready to go in black with what looks like a maroon lettering with gold trim. Something that's a little easier for my colorblind eyes to see, uh, <laughs> which was really tough the last couple of Londonderry games because that, that color <laughs> scheme for me, by the time the uh, lights get turned on, I, I have a real tough time. But, uh, uh, yeah, I can see. this. Uh, yeah, BC High almost has that uh, uh, Maryland away jersey look uh, mm. that they uh, used uh, several years ago, the uh, Maryland Terrapins have some of the most creative uh, uniforms and and uh, graphics that uh, is in lacrosse. They're very much like the Oregon right. football team with right. uh, all their different color schemes and uh, so forth. But uh, uh, but uh, yeah, some of the teams out there in NCAA are actually going retro. Uh, Virginia went retro with uh, not only their uh, 20 or 30 year old jerseys from when it was a, just a plain old white jersey uh, with the uh, orange uh, lettering uh, and numbering but uh, went to um, uh, actually putting the tassel ties on the old helmets oh, wow. as a sticker on the back of the new uh, new lids that uh, everybody's wearing. So, Meanwhile down on the field there was an issue it looked like with one of the goals a net issue that the officials were checking with, and I think we are now about ready to go. Three minutes tardy or not. It's game time here in Nashua. Nick Anastas, Roger Howe with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week. Presented by Beals Insurance. Here in late May, a gorgeous afternoon for a lacrosse game. This one will be won by BC High's McDonald. And right now, the Eagles trying to settle in here on the attack. They'll finally gain possession here on the near wing and look for the step. Oh, This is Will Emsing. It is going to be turned over to the Cardinals. The low pass there couldn't quite find its target. And a win early here for the Cardinals defense. Now BG looking for the clear. And they'll find their man in the middle. And now the... Cardinal attack. We're going to get into position for the first time. This is Tim Kiley. Probably call his name more often than not tonight. Going to get rid of it near side for Connor Bouvier. Another senior. He's on his way to Holy Cross. Cardinals want everybody to get a touch here on the first possession. Kiley's going to be cut off by Marshall Rice, one of the junior middies. And now some movement will set up. Oh. Bouvier is going to go top shelf for goal number one. Just over a minute gone by, and the home team is going to strike first as Bouvier shows off the sniping skills. It's 1-0 Cardinals. Yeah, very nice shot. This is his power. This is his slot. We've talked about it for the last three years with this uh, young man. Uh, you give him uh, 10 yards and uh, an open stretch, uh, he is rarely going to miss. Rarely going to miss. 
So Bouvier makes it one nothing, and then it's Vasquez with the faceoff win for the Cardinals. Good start here for Bishop Girton. Far side, Brady Dumont. Gonna tiptoe his way back towards midfield and get rid of it for Kylie. Kylie looks over his left shoulder. Coach Cameron standing near midfield with his hands on his hips here. Looking to direct traffic. Wants Kylie to go downhill. He's going to step to his right, draws a slide. Miji's going to work it around the horn. Here's Gabord. A little shake and bake for the senior. Draws a slide. Pass off target up top. It is reeled in eventually, however, by Jacob Karen. Another St. A's commit. And another senior, one of many talented seniors, talented upperclassmen in general on this Cardinal roster. It's 1-0 BG here with now two minutes gone by. Gabord thought about it. Yeah. Trying to escape Rice to his right. And that shot ends up wide. It'll be BG ball. That's a good take. We'll, we'll take, you know, that's a good shot. Just missed the net. There it is. Oh. This one redirected at the last moment. Ends up out of play. And it will belong to the Eagles. Yeah, Dumont needs to straighten that out a little bit. I think he was trying to go for the corner, low to high. Just a little too much on it. No backup. You can hear the BG sideline making noise. Trying to inspire this ride. Eagles clear it, however. And now look for the equalizer here with two and a half gone by. This is Cooper Chapman. Another one of these college commits, Roger, that you mentioned. Really both rosters loaded with future NCAA talent. Yeah, it's great to see. I mean, this is this is the future of the NCAA mm. uh, from these two states here. And a lot of them staying right here in New England as well, which is a bonus. Yeah. Here's Chapman to his left. Shot there, a bouncer. Ends up wide, out of play. A foot race will keep it at this end. Good hustle both ways. Emsing was there. He'll be shadowed today by Colin Rourke, the senior D. Fenceman headed to Hofstra. Ooh, now nice play. Cage. They set up Ensing, and there it is. Quick catch and finish for the lefty, Emsing. Going to tie this one at one with just over three minutes gone by first quarter. Smooth. Just smooth. Uh, just uh, good ball movement. Good seam read here by the attackman. Uh, and uh, Emsing finds that uh, opening there on the left side. Very, very nice. Not a lot of pressure there from the BG defenseman. They're going to have to tighten that up a little bit. Third faceoff. Scooped up by McDonald. The sophomore is going to hit the turf, and a flag is going to fly. The Fogo still surrounded. A spin move is going to find him some room. And now he's looking at the cage. He's going to fire and score. Wow. What an indi individual effort there for Shane McDonald. The sophomore fought off two Cardinals at midfield. And then went right down the alley for the second goal. I'm going to pick up the flag here. It's 2-1 BC high as the Eagles take their first lead. That's some serious, serious uh, strength coming out of the... The Fogo there, he, uh, he's got some skill and goes right down the pipe, gets a very, very late slide from BG. We get a violation here. Coach Cameron did not look too pleased with his defense after that one. Meanwhile, a violation is going to give it to the Eagles. So a good start at the X for BC High as they've now won three of four. They look for the third straight goal here with Emsing goal line extended. Going to fire a hopper back for his teammate Brody Rice. Rice may not be playing lacrosse next spring, but he will be playing football this fall for Ooh. Colby College. I Meanwhile, this shot again goes wide, and again will stay here with the Eagles. Now four minutes in, two to one, BC high. This is Noah Hurley, senior attack. Looks for Emsing up top. That pass gets behind him. Eventually is tracked down by Brody Rice near the far sideline. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to shake Colin Rourke off of Emsing uh, and get him on a short pole there on that last sequence. Defender falls down. Shot denied. Scooped up low by Murphy, who was up for the challenge in goal. Will the junior on his way to Bryant getting the start today? Zach Connerty expected to take the afternoon off. Meanwhile, on the clear, 
smothering defense at the 50-yard line. A whistle, and I believe timeout. a timeout was just called by Coach Cameron. He's going to bail out his guy, Aiden Lorendo, who's in some trouble. The Merrimack commit, here's the whistle, and now a timeout. We'll bring a stoppage here. Less than five minutes in, 2-1 to one Eagles. Very impressive ride by BC there. Uh, they had four guys in that zone uh, in the midfield, uh, three attackmen and a long pole, and there was just simply <laughs> no place for Aiden Lorendo to go. Um, Coach Cameron's probably not very happy about having to take a timeout this soon in the uh, first half, but, uh, hey, they're down by one. they got to retain position. they got to get it over half field, set up, and uh, tie this one up. And you get a look at both huddles there on each sideline. Of course, BC High led by former assistant, now head coach Marcus Craigwell. And this is a team, again, looking to improve to 15-1. and one. The Cardinals atop the Max Preps rankings, the state of Massachusetts. And, again, both teams really looking to fine-tune a few things before their respective State tournaments get underway. Mm -hmm. We're less than, what, two weeks out now Yeah, here in New Hampshire. The quarterfinals in Division One, two weeks from yesterday, June the 3rd. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, man, there's a lot of mix uh, going on. Probably the, the most unpredictable uh, division right now is Division Two. Um, lots of things could happen here. Let's get back to the start of the game here because the BG uh, Cardinals are about to get the whistle here. Yep. Facing a double team, Gabor, no problem on the move to his right, but lost the ball. Stripped by the long pole, it's a good piece of defense there. This. It's going to oh. result in a shot and a collision near the cage. Rebound up for grabs. Coach Cameron wanted a whistle. He'll have to settle for possession. That was a great save by Will Murphy. Murphy able to shut things down at the last possible second there. To keep his team within a goal. Meanwhile, Kylie split dodge. Dropped to his knee. Gets back up. Hits the gas. Trying to avoid a hack from behind. That's the long pole James Carroll taking a swig. A swing. The Georgetown commit came away empty. And the Cardinals again will set things up here on the attack. As we near the midway point, first quarter. Bishop Girton a chance to tie the game at two. They want Kylie here on the near wing. The senior to his left. Good double. Lightning quick. Oh, yeah. Avoids the second. Goes across the zone. Bouvier thought about it. Gabord will pull the trigger, and he scores. That one from deep. It goes low. And just like that, we're square yet again. 2-2 two -two here midway through the first. Wow. Yeah, this is, uh, this is just good, patient lacrosse. Uh, Timmy Kiley could have uh, taken a shot here early in that sequence, but pulled it out. They go back around. And another step down. Another step down from about 10, 11 yards. Oh, maybe even more. Yeah, maybe even more. So 2-2. Two -two. Connor Gabord. Ooh, I thought he went early there. He was on his way, by the way, to Army oh. in the fall. They're in action right now in the NCAA tournament. You know, I'll whistle this. will give it to the Eagles. They've yeah. had an advantage here so far at X in this first quarter. Yeah, I thought uh, McDonald went early on that. Uh, they missed that. Both teams have been able to get out and challenge defensively. Eagles trying to spread this one wide. Now jogging to his right is Hurley. Step for step with him. Bobby Canaway, multi-sport athlete for BG. Hurley will shake and bake, trying to clear it out here near side, but nowhere to go. Hurley will try again, this time to his left, being forced out. Going to have to get rid of it. Here's a shot. I won't get through. Marshall Rice pulling the trigger, but it looked like the ball went off the shoulder pad of one of the BG defenders. Yeah, that's number 35, Canaway again, uh, you just mentioned. Two-man game behind the cage. Cardinals able to stay with it on the switch. Good defense. Eagles will pull it back out. Now Rice downhill for BC High. Going to fire. That one came out with some sizzle, but was high. We'll stay here again with BC High. 
And we have five minutes to go, first quarter. The slide comes, that frees up M. Singh for a bouncing shot and goal number two. Well, the senior on his way to Tufts, showing you why there. Perfect placement off the turf. His second goal of this first quarter. BC High the lead again, 3-2. Uh, again, uh, just a nice methodical offense coming off the uh, quick start. And uh, how can you not cover Emsing? you got to have Emsing covered. So 3-2 Eagles. They look to maintain their advantage at the face-off X, and they will. McDonald, another win. And after a couple of drop passes, BC High ready to operate again. Looking for their first two-goal lead of the game. Near oh, the cage! Yeah. Turnaround shot. Wow. And score. The wraparound. Good for Cooper Chapman. The Babson commit. Said why not as he turned the corner. Goes top shelf to beat Murphy, and it's 4-2. BC high out in front. Yeah, we've seen, uh, we've seen Nick Sullivan from uh, Exeter do that several times this year and at critical points in the game, uh, for example, against Bedford. Uh, but he's about 6'2", 6'3". Uh, Chapman's a little smaller than that, but, uh, boy, he wrapped around that uh, post pretty quick. Good for him. So two goals, 19 seconds apart. He's giving the Eagles this 4-2 lead. Pretty goal. Another face-off win for the sophomore McDonald. And again, the Eagles on the attack here. Coming up at four minutes to go, first quarter. Another shot on the run. This one wide. Oh, yeah. A little Good too hustle. wide. Yep. Good hustle by Rourke. He's going to win the race to the near sideline. He will beat out Chapman by a half a stride to ensure the Cardinal possession. Here comes the long pole, going to take it a few yards upfield himself. The Hofstra commit. Rainbow pass, going to skip it to the far side. That's a tough catch, and it oh. won't be pulled in. Ball ends up out of bounds, and the Eagles force a turnover on the ride. Yeah, Cam is not happy with that. Uh, you, don't, uh, you don't really need to do that with the big rainbow arc, especially in the sunfield. Not a cloud in the sky. Temperatures around 70 degrees. A lot of short sleeves and shirts here in late May. We like to see that. Meanwhile, Emsing against Rourke. Nowhere to go behind the net. Looking for a cutter. Now going to drop oh, the shoulder. Take a hit from Rourke, and a flag flies. Emsing right back to work, and now play is stopped here, and the first penalty of the game will be assessed. Yeah, with just over three and a half to go in this first quarter. Yeah, definitely going to go against Rourke. Cross check. He got him right up under the head. Uh, we're looking at one minute here. No lock. Okay. Yep. Just a uh, just a good old one minute on this one. But you can't afford to be putting putting BC high on uh, EMOs all day. So we'll get a good look at uh, their first offense here. The Eagles threatening to go up three for the first time. Looking for three unanswered. So the Cardinals shorthanded here, trying to communicate defensively. VC High going to work here. Oh, I love the movement here. Yeah, I love this. Bounce pass oh, yeah. and a finish. Emsing going to pluck that one over the left shoulder of the goaltender, Murphy, and it's 3-1. Sorry, 3-2. No, 5-2. Three five unanswered two. goals. Three unanswered goals. Yeah, yeah. By BC High yeah. as they're rolling right now here late in this first quarter. I, I love this set. They started in a 1-4. There was immediate movement on this, and a little bounce pass on the wing to Murphy's left, and uh, they score. Uh, and that was quick, too. That was quick. We talk about it all the time on these broadcasts. Get your EMO in motion quickly. Another faceoff win for the Eagles as well. So 5-2, three unanswered for BC High, and three goals in this first quarter for Emsing. Make it four in a row. Count that one for Patrick Maroney. Maroney able to weave his way through. Four unanswered. And I think Coach Cameron has seen enough. A timeout is called here. Second spent timeout in this first quarter. As the Cardinals now trail 6-2, and you see the move there. Good decision, got the step. 
And he beats Murphy low for team goal number six. Our broadcast today brought to you by Beals Insurance. Locations in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance gets you the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Visit BealsInsurance.com. By MG Sports Fundraising. That's fundraising made easy. MG Sports Fundraising is the official fundraising partner of Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. Visit MGSportsFundraising.com. Start raising money for your team today. By New Hampshire iPhone Repair. It's done while you wait, and it's back with their lifetime warranty. Now with six locations in southern New Hampshire and on the seacoast, visit NHIPhoneRepair.com. By the New Hampshire Tomahawks Showcase and Development for College Lacrosse. Visit NHTomahawks.com and also girls.nhtomahawks.com. Dot com by Spectrum Monthly, powerful local advertising solutions. Find out more at SpectrumMonthly.com. And finally, by Roger Howe Real Estate, part of the Bean Group. Call 603-247-1583 to talk to Roger today. Nick and Astis. Not today. Not today. With Roger Howe. We'll <laughs> wait till tomorrow to blow up his phone. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He'd appreciate it. Here on a Sunday in Nashua, temperatures... A perfect 70 degrees, sun is out, and right now the BC Eagles are enjoying life out in front of Bishop Girton. 6-2 here with just over three minutes to go in this opening frame. Yeah, BG is out of sorts on defense right now. BC High is getting them so spread out that the Eagles are recognizing one-on-ones and no slides in the vicinity, and they are going right aggressively to the goal. There's a movement. There's the movement. Yep. It's a I, violation against McDonald. Yeah, I, I think he moved on the one prior, too. That's only the second face-off win for Bishop Girton. And they need it here, trying to put a stop to the bleeding, so to speak, as they've allowed four unanswered goals. Now, I would not be surprised to see BG, maybe not this early, uh, go to zone. But uh, with how they're spreading things out from the Eagles... It'll be interesting to see how he handles that defensively. Look for a screen here. Thought about the shot initially, but Kylie going to backtrack. Oh, no, this is Dumont. Now Dumont will pull the trigger. That's sent aside. Good piece of goaltending there. That's Andrew Tolan in net. Able to sweep low below the knee to get a piece of that one. Yeah, it was a good save. Tracked it all the way. Cardinal set up Dumont again from 15 out. Not going to happen. Tolan. Able to stop that one shoulder high. And now the Eagles will work on the clear here. Still out in front, 6-2. Got to love a goalie that stays with the sweats year-round. How about a goalie that launches a pass nearly the length of the field? That one ends up off the bounce in the stick of Emsing. That was a program play. Emsing was, was huddled over there in the corner. Definitely. Worked out. And after the clear... BC High looking for their first five-goal lead here with inside of two minutes to go first quarter. Here comes Rice downhill. That shot, though, off target. Ends up out of play in the far corner where M. Singh gets ready for the restart. Kind of a smart move, too, if you think about it, because you know that BC or BG is going to have to pack it in defensively, so they're going to slough off uh, on a clear like that. And, wow, M. Singh's wide open. To his left. Shot. Won't happen. Hurley, pretty good look. And now Hurley fighting for the ground ball in the corner. Rourke is there for BG, and he's got it. Oh, nice. Whoa. Good stop there by the Cardinals. Up the field it goes. And now the attack trying to get a shot in transition. Alex Dumont, the long stick midi, couldn't handle the pass. Instead, it's taken away on the ground ball for Brody Rice. Eagles quickly up the field. Chapman, goal line extended far side behind the cage now for Emsing. Left unguarded for the moment. Down to one minute remaining, first quarter. Eagles threatening to go back up or go up by five for the first time. Yeah, they'll, they'll hang here. They've got Rourke uh, hung up. Watch for some cutters to come through. No help on the, on the slide here for Rourke. Now Rourke comes after him. M sing a wraparound, not going to happen. Murphy able to shut it down on the release. A quick outlet taken by Canaway up oh. the field. That one. In and out of the stick of Caleb Young. Gets it. Young able to recover. Coming down the middle. Hooks up near side. The shot ends up high. Pretty good look for Lorendell, but a better effort out of the cage there 
by Toland to ensure the possession for the Eagles. That's probably not the best uh, take uh, at, with 25 seconds left on the clock being down by four. So you want to get a last uh, shot attempt here for them. Stab. Intercepted. Take it away. Spin move. Shot yeah. and score. That is Karen. Able to beat the defense and then beat the goaltender with just 10 seconds remaining. A much-needed shot in the arm there for Bishop Girton. Well, the, the Cardinals are back within three. It's 6-3. Yeah, absolutely, and uh, good, for, good for Jake there because uh, that kind of uh, softens the wound of throwing that one up. Not throwing, but uh, shooting the ball a little too soon with uh, a lot of time left on the clock. So uh, you can probably just, uh, that's a zero net gain, I guess, uh, when you talk about the mistakes uh, that you make out there. Final 10 seconds. McDonough against Vasquez. Win for McDonald. McDonald to his left. Takes a shot. And that one a little wide of the target. Out of play with just 2.4 seconds remaining. See if the Eagles can manufacture one final shot here. Maroney from the corner. Throws it into a crowd and that'll do it. A good start for the visitors. The Boston College High Eagles. 14-1 on the season. And perhaps the best team in Massachusetts. Showing you why here. 6-3 over Bishop Girton after one. The Cardinals look for a response when we come back. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Back here for the second quarter, 6-3 is our score. BC High out in front of Bishop Curtin. Nick Anastas, Roger Howe with you. The battle on the border, a.k.a. our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week presented by Beals Insurance. Started off with a 2-2 tie before the Eagles ran off four straight. One of those was an EMO goal. Final 10 seconds belong to Bishop Girton as Jacob That's Karen. A push. Got himself a breakaway goal moments ago. So here we are, 12 minutes in. Now 12 minutes and 9 seconds in. 6-3 BC High. These two teams, of course, looking for a final tune-up, so to speak, before the state tournaments begin less than two weeks from today. Yeah, we got a flag here. It's going to be on BC. I think it's a legal body check. Yeah, no, Slash. Slash. That's Hayes McCarran, the senior, yep. on his way to Bowdoin. Going to try to explain himself there with his right foot. Sorry, his right knee down on the turf in the penalty box. He's a dual athlete, Roger, on his way to Bowdoin to play both lacrosse and football. Jeez. They just keep pumping him out, huh? They do. In fact, BC High, across the board, Roger, 24 committed future NCAA student athletes in that school. And a lot of them, as we know, are on this roster here with lacrosse. Is, is that boys and girls? Or that is that boys and girls, 24. Wow. Future wow. NCAA student athletes. Wow. Cardinals, they've got some pretty good student athletes of their own, including Gabor on his way to Army. Going to fire one there from the top of the box that ends up high. Cardinals will try and do it again. Set up Gabor here near side. Going to work to his left. BG trying to get back within two here. First minute, second quarter. Dumont wide open. Oh, off the that one goes off the crossbar about a mile up into the air before it lands along the far sideline. It'll stay with the Cardinals. <laughs> I love that that uh, sequence there on both sides. 
See the step down shot on the replay. That one about an inch off. Near side. Another one. This one is good. That's Brady Dumont. The junior Villanova commit. Says this time I'm going to beat the goaltender. Puts it over the shoulder of Tolan and it's 6-4. Back-to-back goals now for Bishop Gert. Yeah, and, and this is a well-run EMO play by the Cardinals. Uh, quick start, whistle. Cam's always very good at this. Uh, find that far side. You didn't have to get a skip pass to get it over there. Just uh, very quick uh, and uh, 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 exact passing. Uh, and you can't get the defense to shift fast enough. Face off. Belongs again to BC High. Hayes McCarron comes in from the wing to pluck that one off the turf. As the X has been kind to BC High so far in this first half. Yeah, that makes nine. Nine for Mc McDonald. Nine to... Nine to two. two uh, actually, it? three because... Nine that, to three. Yeah, nine three. BG won the first one here in the second. This is Luke Allen. One of the few underclassmen to get time either way today. Just a sophomore. Up top, Rice. A lot of talk defensively here for the Cardinals. BG, little two-man game right side. Nowhere to go. Pass disrupted. And now loose out in front of the cage. Whistle. Okay. Got a push. I'm going to go BG. I didn't see much there, but you're right. They're going to give it to the Cardinals. Well, I think one of the BG players was uh, might have been on his knee when that happened. Cardinals look for their third straight. Chance to get back within one since about for the first time since about midway through that first quarter. We're two minutes in here, second quarter. One on one, downhill shot coming nice. on the run. You bet. Nice. Hey, beautiful finish there. Was that Dumont again? He looks like it. Yeah. Brady Dumont, who scored a moment ago. Was it five or six? It's hard to tell with, with the lettering up here. That's actually, I believe, Roger. Is that Caleb, Caleb Young? Caleb Young yeah, yeah, number five, not yeah. number six. So Caleb Young, the Stony Brook commit, the junior, is going to light the lamp here. BG scored three straight, and they're back within one at 6-5. Boy, I'm glad I'm not the only one having eyesight problems here today. There's a lot of sun, and those white numbers yeah. are blending together, right? It, it may be a case of the blind leading the blind, oh, Well, <laughs> because I cannot see much better up here with those white lettering on the yellow jerseys. Yeah. Top. Oh. Meanwhile, look out, a... Stick goes up in the air. They're going to give that to BC. Eagles have it. Scoop pass sets up a shot that ends up high. Goalie and then ball. I believe Murphy may have swung the stick <laughs> in time to ensure the possession. Good heads up play by the junior in cage. Yeah, that, that was a rocket shot, and thankfully Will was behind the net when it went out of bounds because the uh, BC high coach is not happy about that. He thought his guy was closest. Meanwhile, this is Micah Dunsmore. Trying to avoid oh. two players with a swim and a split dodge at midfield is going to do the trick on the clear. Good play by the youngster for the Cardinals. And now BG. Less than three minutes gone by, second quarter. A chance to tie the game, Roger. They trailed by as many as four. Coach Cameron was forced to use both timeouts in that first quarter to right the ship. And now his team within striking distance here trying to score their fourth straight. And tie this one up at six. Yeah, yeah. It's. Uh, I mean, here they are. They're within one after uh, being down by four, and, and those two timeouts uh, have come in handy. And here. as you saw in that Got previous replay, Dumont there about an inch off from tying this one. Meanwhile, it's Young trying to shake off the pesky defender McCarron. They go near side for Dumont, trying to escape the pursuit of a big defender. It's Donovan Babka. Long stick midi, and a senior. Young, a bouncer is going to find its mark. Boy, that's a tough shot. Back-to-back -back goals for Young, and we are tied at six. With now three and a half gone by in this second quarter. Now, this is what you got to do, and this is the sign of a good shooting offensive team, and that is mix your shots up, stop trying to pluck corners every time, and get some nice bounce shots in here. And this is just totally indicative of that. Nice job. Nice job. Who got the assist on that? Is that Timmy Kiley or Karen, that is? 
Not quite sure there, but heck of a shot either way to tie this thing at six. Back-to-back -back goals for Caleb Young. And off the faceoff, Marshall Rice is going to swoop in for BC High. Numbers for the Eagles, shot and score. That's Cooper Chapman second, the senior. Found a spot he liked there, Roger, able to post up from the near wing and beat Murphy high to reclaim the lead for BC high, 7-6. Yeah, just a, another uh, textbook uh, change of plane shot there. So both teams are uh, really dialed in here on mixing things up. Uh, good to see, just good to see. So blow for blow. As Chapman comes up with the answer there, 13 seconds after Caleb Young had scored at the other end. And now back-to-back -back wins at the X is going to get the Eagles cooking again here. Looking for breathing room out in front, 7-6, four minutes in, second quarter. We welcome those of you watching from the Bay State. Big audience here this afternoon. Nick and ask this Roger Howe with you. Two of the best teams in New England. Throws it out. And here's a rare turnover from the Eagles here in this first half as they look for something backdoor that doesn't quite materialize. Yeah, that's the first time we've used that word today, turnover. I mean, we haven't seen really, uh, saw them throw one out of bounds uh, on an offensive set, uh, uh, BC that is. Uh, that's the second one there, but nothing from BG. The Eagles much. are going to force one here on the ride. Now Emsing on the run is going to light the lamp over the helmet, it looked like, of Murphy. That's his fourth goal in this first half. And it's now 8-6 here as back and forth, back and forth we go in this first half. <laughs> this kid can fire, man. Uh, he, just, he just goes right to town. What can you say? I mean, left-handed, little, little slight change of plane from his hip. Yep, just beautiful, right under the crossbar. And I'll tell you what, Tufts is going to be getting a heck of a player. We know them, a D3 powerhouse at the NCAA level. Not that they need him. <laughs> I mean, they're, they're scoring 21 game, uh, goals a game on average this season at mm. Tufts. But, well, uh, yeah, good for him. He'll fit right in with that high-powered attack for he sure. certainly will. He's got four goals in the first half today to lead his team to an 8-6 lead. Nearly now five minutes gone by, second quarter. A good turnout here at Stello Stadium. A lot of students are in the crowd here cheering on Bishop Girton. Of course, the parents, they always turn out. And they're here as well. They and do. some folks have made the trip up north. About a 40-minute drive or so from the Boston area to cheer on the Eagles as well. So it's a spirited crowd here on a Sunday afternoon. We're glad you could join us. Well, i Friday Night Lights, New Hampshire. I've seen some... Uh lacrosse junkies too that aren't affiliated with either team here today too so a little bit of a who's who in the crowd yeah honey i'm going out <laughs> going out for some uh some milk be back a couple Sh hours shot on the run won't get quite through i believe one of the defenders got a piece and then johnny on the spot with the ground ball is one of the long poles on the far side there's the clear there's the shot there's the save well, Murphy got a piece, a long ricochet. Emsing has it, and then I believe a timeout, yes, has been called by Coach Craigwell to ensure the possession there. Is BC High going to talk about it with just about midway through? We're midway through now, the second quarter. Yeah, and that's a good timeout, too. I mean, you know, we say it all the time. You can't take them with you into the second half, and you retain possession, calm down a little bit. It's mm -hmm. been a pretty good flurry of action. First time out charged to BC High here in this first half. Again, if you're just joining us, the visitors trailed early. As BG scored on their first possession, Connor Bouvier just over a minute in lit the lamp to make it 1 0. Eagles struck back with two straight to take their first lead. Will Emsing, Shane McDonald. 2 1, four minutes in. 2 2 after. Connor Gabord came up with the answer about midway through that first quarter. And then late in the first, BC High made their move. They score four unanswered, led by Emsing. Connor uh, Cooper, Chapman, and Patrick Maroney, along with two from Emsing in that stretch, made it 6 2, largest lead either way. Jacob Karen 
Able to score a late one before the end of the first quarter. Just 10 seconds left to pull BG back within three. It's 6-3. And then, well, the BG run continued here early in the second. Brady Dumont and then back-to-back -back goals by Caleb Young. Tied the game at six. The last two, though, have gone to the Eagles. Chapman and then a moment ago, Emsing's fourth. Make it 8-6, and that is where we are midway through this high-scoring first half. We're midway through of course, the second quarter. Yeah, Emsing, certainly the show, certainly uh, as advertised from uh, what we know of him. And, uh, and BG's got their work cut out here. Another shot and score. It's Moroni. Well, that one seemed like a design play drawn up in the huddle by Coach Craigwell, right, Roger? As they isolate their guy behind the cage, a one on one move, and we've seen a number of wraparound shots that have resulted in goals in this first half, including that one there. Yeah, not only that, I think they have picked up, uh, BC High that is, have, have picked up on the fact that uh, there's not a lot of down low slides available to them because they're pulling the rest of the offense, uh, or the, excuse me, the BG defense up off of goal line extended, and uh, these guys are just pretty fast and pretty skilled getting to the spot before the defense can. Meanwhile, violation here. That's their Against second. BG High. Uh, I'm sorry, Bishop Curtin. By the way, Coach Cameron has turned to Noah Zeman, the senior Fogo. Or at least he did there. He just to uh, take the face off. So he just uh, he just recently committed uh, to Riviera right, right here in Nashua. Right. Good to see him stay home, so to speak. Some you know local who else? Talent. You know who else committed over the weekend was uh, Curtis Michaud to uh, Riviere. There you go. Playing for uh, Coach Delano. He must be very, very happy. Of course, oh! Mich goal Michaud, the goaltender for Pinkerton. Here is a beautiful shot by Dumont. Going to go upstairs for his second goal of this second quarter. Cardinals get a big goal to slow the momentum a bit. After BC High rattled off three straight, the Cardinals are back within two. Oh, my goodness. I mean, how many times have we seen Brady Dumont do this uh, in that same exact spot? It's almost like an instant replay with that kid when he gets down low like that. Nice play. Good shot. So 9-7. So much for that low-scoring prediction, Roger. Huh? <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm <laughs> way off now. Well... Well, you're not off often, but I have a feeling this one might be a double-digit affair both ways oh, before no it's question, said and done. Man. No question. No question. Another win for McDonald at X. Sophomore has been excellent for BC High, no matter who's been on the other side. And again, a chance for the Eagles here to go back up by three with now five minutes to go until halftime. they will hit the reset button. Brody Rice unchallenged for the moment. Going to come near side for Luke Allen. Allen, the sophomore, nowhere to go. He'll swing it now, far side wing. Cardinals continuing to talk defensively. Spin move, Emsing oh. sets up Allen. Shot goes off the post. Now you can hear that one all the way up here. It'll roll out of bounds, and the Eagles will restart. Boy, uh, you can see where BG was packed in there on defense and left the uh, top crease guy wide open. Pretty clean look, but again, a game of inches sometimes. That one couldn't quite find the mark. Yep. Another try for BC High. They'll work it. Far wing shot upstairs, swallowed up. Murphy up for the challenge on that one. Another save Ooh. for the junior. Outlet dropped, recovered. And now again, the Cardinals will look to clear it. So we head towards four minutes to go, second quarter. Good hustle by BC to get over on that far side and shut off the outlet for, uh, for BG's clear. Rourke looking for Canaway, too high and turned over. Taken away on the bounce. That Eagles ride has been pretty good in this first half. Sure has. This pass, though, too strong for Rice. Still inbound, scooped up on the run by Chapman, and Another timeout one. number two is going to come from the Eagles sideline. Coach Craigwell, again, not playing games, not going to. Take a chance, going to use that final timeout here with 3.40 to go until the break. Yeah, still a lot of time left, but again, um, keep possession. Uh, program something up like they did the last timeout. Come right out and, uh, and run a play. Um, 
Yeah, just uh, Colin Rourke looks a little bit off here today. Uh, maybe he's getting a little tired. That one uh, pass there on the clear went way over the head of the uh, the BG attackman, and uh, there wasn't a lot of pressure on him at the, at the time. The pressure, though, has been consistent here. Yes, it has. As yes. we knew it would be, the Eagles have forced a few turnovers with that ride. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's really been a prevalent factor all season. Of course, the Eagles... Winners of 14 of their first 15 games. Yeah, yeah. And the and the ride from uh, the Eagles uh, has been predominantly a three-man drop into the zone somewhere in that 40-yard line area. Uh, this time they kept the, uh, a rover or a, or a pursuit guy down low on the attack, uh, but they got the onboard long pole who streaked across the. Uh, 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 the far side of the field to the uh, cone, as we called it, uh, at the 50, and he was there to cover up uh, BG's outlet. So that forced Colin Rourke to uh, pass through the middle uh, through some traffic, and uh, he either just didn't see his guy too clearly or it was just a, uh, a misfire on his pass. But uh, ball goes the other way quickly, and now we're into the timeout and a restart. So both teams out of timeouts here for the remainder of this first half. 3.40 to go in the second quarter. Coming up at halftime, a look back. At the action, full recap, stats, highlights, analysis. And a look at the out-of-town scoreboard as well. I know it's a Sunday, but there oh, are some games going me? on. Here's a beautiful shot oh my and gosh. score for Emsing. That is number five here in this first half of the senior. Oh, my goodness. All right. Watch ESPN this week. That's going to be a top tenner. That was, that was tremendous. No look behind the back. Not even a behind-the-back, really, a B BTB, as we call it, but he just kind of sweeps sweeps backward. And wow. <laughs> just <laughs> There's a guy by the name of Palmer back in the day, uh, maybe about seven, eight years ago for Hopkins that scored a goal like that right on the crease, and it was that very reminiscent of that move. So Emerson continuing to build upon his stellar first half here. He's led the Eagles with five goals. Oh. Their lead is back to three at 10-7. Cardinals, though, have the answer at X. Good spin move by Vasquez. The sophomore down the alley. Shot there, a little high. Out of play. Backed up by Karen. It'll stay here with the Cardinals. We, we've said it before this season when we've uh, broadcast uh, the, the Cardinals games that Paolo does a very good job of making adjustments during the game. Uh, and I think uh, we're seeing that uh, uh, so far here in the second quarter. Uh, BG is now holding their own at the X. Well, Whoa. Dumont couldn't quite reel that it's one in. Back. It's an over and back. And it's up for grabs. Over and back called. BC High hoping for a quick restart. Won't quite get it. But they're okay with just the possession here as they grind the clock down inside of three minutes remaining first half. Chapman going to avoid the other Dumont. That's the long pole, Alex. Skip pass taken overhead by Rice. Coach Craigwell. Looks like he's directing off ball traffic here from the BCI sideline. And I yeah, believe his players now have the message. Yeah, pull him out. Pull the defense out. Rice to his right. Short pass taken in. Chapman. Trying to dance his way out of trouble. Comes back middle. Fires a sidewinding shot that ends up wide. And out of play. It's a close foot race that's won by Emsing. Quick this. restart. He's got his eye on the cage, and he's got another one. Yeah, he's got to be aware of that. <laughs> you know, there's a flag on the play. The goal, goal is going to count. Emsing's got six here in this first half. And BC High has now equaled their largest lead from earlier. Back out in front by four. 11-7. And we're going to get a penalty here, too, on top. Goal is good. Oh, wave it off. It was technical, so no no, uh, no penalty here. But, but, I saw uh, uh, the BG defender complaining a little bit about the quick start. That's something you've got to be aware of. You've got to be ready to go, uh, especially against a team as skilled as... Uh, BG is because they do that all the time, too. They know about quick starts. Nope, there it is. Another, that's their third violation. Meanwhile, and that's flag gonna is going to fly here. It's going to come against the long pole defender, James Carroll. 
The senior on his way to Georgetown. Not happy as he jogs off the field. Going to be responsible for the second penalty against oh, BCI. Yeah, and now you're gonna get another, another one. flag is thrown. Coach Craigwell is upset at midfield. That second one may have been against the coach. Coach Craigwell trying to laugh it off, going to give his guy a pound. But a technical foul has been yeah. assigned to the sideline there. Yeah, I think it's going to be a bench, uh, unsportsmanlike on the bench. But I'm not quite sure how that gets assigned. It might get assigned to six as well. First EMO for BG today. First or second? This is their second. third. Well, second, third? yeah. No, no, second with uh, two guys here. Shot up top. Which yeah, only one penalty earlier against BCI. Exactly, yeah. That yeah. shot won't get through, and now the goaltender trying to help out on the clear. That's Toland, who's played well in this first half. A sprint along the far sideline is won by BC High. Long pole trying to get rid of it. And ultimately does. Yeah, and they'll just rag it here. Here's Maroney behind the cage. Final minute 20. Maroney in no hurry with his club shorthanded. A little isolation here. Now a second slide. Or a second player comes over on the slide. That was Dumont. And here's Emsing. He's been the star here in this first half. Rings his defender, Finn Moran, over one-on-one. -on -one. Moran, the defenseman, committed to Siena. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. saying forced to give it up. Somebody's open somewhere. It's yep. Rice. A shot swallowed up. Murphy ready for it. Quick outlet near side for Canaway. Final 45 seconds. Cardinals trying to push it. They trail 11-7. Canaway, a little stop and start down the middle. Shot there. Ends up high. Came out a little awkwardly. Flies out of the stick. Out of bounds. It'll stay. With the Cardinals, Karen the restart, 35 seconds on the clock. We are back to even strength. A good job by BC High to kill the penalty. Yeah, I don't know if Bobby's uh, that familiar with his left hand. That's why it looked a little awkward. 20 seconds. Cardinals looking for one more. Dumont has scored twice. Gets rid of it. Gabord cycles near side. Oh, Wide yeah. open. Bouvier. You bet. Well, some unselfish play there on the attack. The patience pays off. Bouvier ends up with a wide open shooting lane here near side and takes advantage. He scored the first goal of the game, and he may have scored the last goal of this first half as well with less than 12 seconds. Cardinals clawing back. They're within three, 11-8. I mean, nobody's even sliding to him. The, the defender is just kind of trotting across and looking at the goaltender. Wow. I mean, he, he, he doubled and tripled, clutched on that almost. Uh, Had the time to do it. He sure did. Face-off win for Vasquez. Spin move. Or is this Zeman? That's Zeman. That's Zeman. Ran out of real estate, lost the ball, and that'll do it for the first half. Wow. Well, two of the best teams in New England playing like it. A combined 19 goals. Through the first 24 minutes, BC High with a three-goal lead, 11-8 at the midway point here in Nashua. Wow. Um, yeah, good quality lacrosse. Uh, man, I don't know what they can do about Ensing out there, but uh, they got to figure something out because uh, with six goals here in the first half, uh, that would have uh, made a big difference on the scoreboard. He's been the man. His team has followed suit. And the Eagles looking for win number 15 on the season. Out in front at halftime, 11-8. Coming up, a lot to get to as we tally up the numbers from that first half. A full recap. Rogers got the stats. Ben's got the highlights. And all in all, we've got you covered. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Halfway home here at Stello Stadium. BC High 11. Bishop Girton 8. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week. Presented by Beals Insurance.
Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603 471 9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, and fall elite teams so play with the best the new hampshire tomahawks showcase and development for college lacrosse visit newhampshiretomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com how can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now is a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another athletic program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with the Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years' experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of the Bean Group today. Buy local and save big. For over 26 years, Spectrum Monthly has been providing great local offers from businesses in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Delivered to your mailbox every month, Spectrum is chock full of savings from your favorite businesses. From local restaurants and retail stores to entertainment, fitness, and home improvement services, you'll have easy access to thousands of dollars in savings, including exclusive offers for Spectrum readers. Every month, enter our readership contest for a chance at winning cash and local gift certificates. Spectrum Monthly. No one brings you better offers.
Halftime here in Nashua. Nick and ask this Roger Howe with you. 11-8 BC High out in front of Bishop Girton here in our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week. Presented by Beals Insurance. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so now. Free to do so, of course. We're on YouTube at FNLNH Media. Again, Friday Night Lights New Hampshire on YouTube at FNLNH Media. This one got off to a good start for Bishop Girton. Just over a minute in, they get their first goal. Connor Bouvier lit the lamp high to make it 1 0. BC High responded with two straight. Will Emsing, Shane McDonald. 2 to 1. Four minutes in, Connor Gabor came up with the equalizer for the home team about midway through that first quarter. 2-2 two -two at that point. Then BC High rattled off four straight. A second for Emsing. Cooper Chapman chipped in. Emsing's third made it 5-2. That also came on the EMO. Patrick Maroney. Just over three minutes to go in that opening frame. Made it 6-2. Final ten seconds of the first. Jacob Karen on a breakaway for Bishop Girton. Brought the Cardinals back to within three, and that's where we were after the first quarter. Second quarter, the BG run continued. Brady Dumont, his first, came just seconds into that second quarter. And then back-to-back -back goals from Caleb Young tied the game at six. BC High had another run in them. Chapman, his second, made it 7-6. It was only, what, less than 20 seconds following the Young goal to break that tie. Once again, 7-6 at that point. And then Emsing gets his fourth to make it 8-6. Maroney another to make it 9-6. That was midway through the second quarter. Cardinals, after a brief pause, got back on track with Brady Dumont second. 9-7 at that point. And then two more from Emsing. Goals number five and six for the senior. Pushed the BC high lead to 11-7 with just over two minutes to go. Bouvier had the last laugh for Bishop Girton. His second goal with 12 seconds to go before halftime. Brings us to where we are here on the eve of the third quarter. 11-8 BC high out in front as the Eagles look to improve to 15-1 on the season. Yes, indeed. And uh, exciting first half. Um, I do want to get this in before we move on with any analysis on uh, what to uh, see in the second half here. Um, Army down by two against Penn State. I'm a Penn State guy. Grew right, up, grew up right, in Penn State. Right. Uh, Dawson Clark with only one shot on goal right now, but uh, that's in the fourth, about about five and a half minutes left in the game there. So, uh, you know, maybe Army can pull this one out late uh, against the Nittany Lions. But, hey, what does Bishop Girton need to do here uh, to uh, shut off the bleed of uh, Will Emsing, and I think the only thing they can really do is just face mask this guy, face guard him as best they can. Uh, Colin Rourke is just going to have to, uh, you know, stay up with him, try to shut him down. Um, BG made their uh, uh, made, made up some ground on the face off, so that's not killing them right now. In mm. fact, uh, I've got it uh, 13 to eight. Uh, in favor of uh, BG or BC, that is so not uh, not too too bad. Uh, and both goalies, uh, you know, the Bishop Girton goalie Will Smith, he's got seven saves. So uh, they just got to figure a way out to get Emsing uh, uh, covered, uh, packing in a little tighter, but uh, be ready to uh, be ready to slide quickly against this team. All right, first half in the books. Are we in for as much firepower here in the second half? We will see. Another violation. This time against Bishop Girton is going to give BC the ball after the opening faceoff. And they're going to go to work here left to right in this third quarter. Here's Emsing, the player to watch, 35 in black. Six goals in the first half. Four unassisted. Yep. Here's Rice. Wants to go one-on-one -on -one to his left. Nowhere to go. Both teams took pretty good care of the ball. In that first half, limiting the turnovers. Oh, my gosh. High slot oh. shot, ends up wide. He was open. Wow. It was Noah Hurley who got a good look but couldn't quite find the touch. Yeah, and, uh, hey, leave your pole out there because he can stick handle, so why not? He's got Rice it. frees himself up, and Murphy up for the task. Taken by Dumont. Long pole, going to skip it near side, trying to keep it in bounds. In doing so is Rourke. Look at the coverage in the middle, Nick. Not a whole lot open. Rourke 
Five guys. Tried to find Canaway there, but could not. And again, the ride for BC High forcing the issue. Yeah, and, and I mean, that's just, that's we're not used to seeing that from uh, Bishop Girton. They usually have a pretty quick clear with guys open everywhere, and it's just not happening today. It was a good play. On the clear, trying to swim upstream. Oh. The long pole is picked off. Intercepted by Bishop Girton's there we Finn go. Moran, and now the go. Cardinals off and running after the clear. Kylie. Yeah. Wants one for himself. The shot there is wide, and nobody to back it up. No. Nope. Karen out of position. The goaltender with a good heads-up play there. We got a new goalie, by the way, is Charlie McCullough between the pipes here to begin the second half for BC High, taking over for first-half starter Andrew Toland. Yeah, and uh, we didn't get the replay there, but uh, Timmy Kiley felt some resistance on that second uh, step-in, and uh, he saw the BC guy come into him, which caused him to change his plane, which went out of bounds uh, over the net. Karen, their side, side for Lorendo, has got a goal. There we go. Well, first the Cardinals forced the turnover on the ride. BC High can't recover in time. The Cardinals find the open player near the net. That's Lorendo, who's going to bring his team back within two at 11-9. Yeah, and good for the Cardinals here because uh, they needed that uh, pressure to be present uh, and match what uh, the Eagles have been doing. Uh, to them here uh, so far at least in this half as uh, as uh, we start the early part but uh, yeah good uh, good pressure and then they turn it uh, into some money comes with just over two minutes gone by oh nice in this third quarter body on the turf yeah. whistle and it looks like the Eagles will be rewarded possession yes They're going to do it again. Long pole Carroll in attack mode. Short pass taken on the far side. They'll pull it back out. Eagles looking for a response, trying to rebuild this three-goal lead. They've led by as many as four. Moroni behind the cage, one-on-one. -on -one. Well, the matchup, the same Roger from the first half. Rourke, the Hofstra commit, going to stay with Emsing. Yes. Has not touched it much here to begin this third quarter. A shot there off balance and off target from Nolan Hurley. It is backed up. And now Maroney showing the quickness. Frees himself up. Wrap around won't go. And again, it'll be in the hands of Chapman in BC High. I'm going to try and stay keyed in on M. Singh and uh, Rourke this battle here. Rourke's in the slide spot now. You can't leave him open. Well, Hurley throws a wild pass. Rice trying to juggle to keep it in bounds and will along that far sideline. Yeah, this is. Go ahead, Nick. I was just saying three minutes in, third quarter. Yeah, he's open again. Shot shut off. Chapman reverses direction. Canaway comes over on the switch. And now goal line extended. The senior wants to go to work. One on one, near side, right shot, no. Too wide with the right hand. Out of play. Emsing. Watch Ready this. for the restart here in the near corner. Yeah, watch this. Lengthy possession for the Eagles. Little wing action here. Watch the two men on the wing. Looking for a screen. Good screen. Not a bad, not, not a good match here for the Cardinals. That's Young defensively picks up Emsing off the switch, and now Emsing ready to go one on one to his left. The midfielder trying to stay with him. Shot there, swallowed up by Murphy. Quick outlet for Canaway is high. Ball on the turf, Canaway, has got it. Good play there for the Cardinals. Pass to the middle for Young. In and out of his stick, up in the air. Lorendo, Lorendo split dodge, oh. goes to the net and scores. Aiden Lorendo, both of his goals coming here in the third and BG is back in business. Back within one, 11 10. Geez, I don't, I don't think we even mentioned Aiden Lorendo in the first half, except for maybe once when he, ha he got a touch. But uh, here he is, back to back goals, and great effort. Great effort by uh, yeah. uh, Aiden on that. Boy. Yeah. Really was. He got hit a couple of times there, but was able to somehow find enough room to pull the trigger. And Coach Cameron's got his guys right back in the hunt. Yep. With now four minutes gone by, third quarter. BG has trailed most of the afternoon. Oh! <laughs> Face off one, 
and then a bad pass is going to force Emsing to scramble. The senior trying to track it, and Rourke instead oh. has it for BG. His pass is knocked down here in the corner. And now a good old-fashioned scrum taking place along the near sideline. Maroney had it for a moment, lost oh, his yeah. stick. Here's the whistle, and it's a violation against BC High. Cardinal Bench likes it, the sideline applauding. They get the clear they look for, and now a chance to tie it. Gabord comes middle, wants it for himself, and he lights the lamp. Connor Gabord says all aboard the BG train. They've scored three straight here to begin the second half, and they've tied this thing at 11. And that is the clear that we're used to seeing out of BG Cardinals because Timmy Kiley, he comes out of that uh, uh, clear, full bore, full steam, finds the open guy, and Gabor just cranks it in. And the goalie had a good view of this too, so that was a rocket. Gabor, the multi-sport star, the senior, on his way to Army in the fall, has his second goal of the game. BG has scored four straight, dating back to the closing seconds before halftime. And now with less than five minutes gone by in this third quarter, we are even once again at 11. Eagles win the faceoff. They look for their first goal since halftime. Bouncer from Emsing won't do it. But it's backed up by Maroney, and the visitors will have another crack here. Yeah, still a good shot selection there by Emsing. He just missed it. He got a little bit too much in front of it. Goes over the net. BC High coming in, the number one ranked team in Massachusetts at 14 and one. The shot there from Rice is off target. Cardinals, the best team in New Hampshire's NHIAA Division One at 12 and three. All three losses against out-of-state opponents. And all by close, close margins as well. They lost to Staples out of Connecticut by a goal, 11-10. As we mentioned last week, a defeat against St. John's was 12-11. Most lopsided defeat, a three-goal edge against Archbishop Stepanak out of White Plains, New York. Of course, BG undefeated against in-state competition, and they've won two straight Division I championships here in the Granite State as well. So two of the best teams, best programs oh. in New England. Oh, Whoa, not going to happen as Hurley is denied by Murphy. Hurley was wide open. Ground ball recovered by oh. Chapman, who's going to light the lamp. Had something to say to the Cardinal bench as he registers his hat trick there. And the Cardinals are going to score their first goal since the break to reclaim the lead 12-11. Yeah, he just poured it on here, and he broke uh, through the, the defender without a slide coming. And uh, good bounce shot. I love the shot selection by both teams today. They are really mixing it up well. Seen a lot off the turf, a lot of bouncers. Yes, which is the sign of a good coach team and a team that... Uh, that knows how to uh, how to shoot offensively. McDonald of Fogo going to fire on the run. He's taken every face off today for BC High. It's been a combination of Vasquez and Zeman who have handled the work for the Cardinals. Yeah, then BG's got to get back on it because uh, I have them 5-0 uh, here in this third quarter. Yeah, in favor of BC High. We're midway through the third quarter. A one goal lead. For the Eagles, oh, they look goodness. to double it, and they will. Good pass again. Man waiting in the slot on the finish. Yeah, our another assist for Emsing, and it's 13-11 BC High out in front by two again. Yeah, I think Emsing got the goal. Yeah, you're yeah, right. You're right. He got the Excuse goal. Me. So, so here's what's here's here's what it was BC Luke Allen on the assist. Here, here's what BC's doing now. They're bringing Will Emsing down on the crease, and they're forcing Colin Rourke to be the first hot slide. And when he drifts away, Emsing's such a big guy, he is getting open. And that's the third time I've seen that this half. Vasquez, a big win at X for the Cardinals. You called for it, Roger. The sophomore delivers. But two goals, 30 seconds apart, 31 seconds if we're being accurate. Yeah. Who, who got the assist on that, Nick? That was Allen, the sophomore. A Allen, okay, yeah. Luke Allen listed as both an attackman and a midfielder for Coach Craigwell. He's played well, the youngster out there with some, some heavyweights. 
heavyweight upperclassmen on both teams. Good to see a sophomore rise to the occasion. And, and it's time for oh, yeah. Cardinals for an answer. Yep. And Dumont yep. will give it to him. Yep. Brady Dumont able to weave and dodge and then fire away. His third of the afternoon, and again, it's a one-goal game at 13-12. And again, I'm going to mention Timmy Kiley on this because he had a drive down the alley on the uh, goalie's left side in his left hand, which is one of his strengths. And he uh, goes back to the attack, which leaves Brady Dumont in a one-on-one -on -one with a shorty. And that's just a great play by Brady, and he recognizes it right off the bat, goes right to the rack. So Dumont leading the way in the goal scored category for BG with three. Face-off win for Vasquez. Scooped up by the pole. Oh. However, his pass intended for Lorindo is too high, oh. and now it's up for grabs. Push. You got to push yeah. against Vasquez as Emsing hit the deck. Yeah, these are unfamiliar uh, errors that we're not used to seeing out of uh, the Cardinals. That's a couple here on the day. Far side, skip. Chapman. Shot off target. That's going to go BC. Yep. Oh, no, it's BG. Yep. Good play by the pole, Dylan Young. The Clarkson commit to get the possession for his team there. Look at Bouvier. Oh, little pluck pass over the top taken by Finn Moran. Cardinals get the clear they wanted. And now a chance to tie here as we tick down to four minutes third quarter. Nick and ask this, Roger Howe with you. It's our Friday Inside. Night Lights New Hampshire game of the week. Shot denied. Out of the cage there for the goal. That's Charlie McCull McCullough. Able to stone the shot at the doorstep oh. to keep this a one-goal game. Emsing, meanwhile, reels that in one-handed overhead to avoid the over and back. And again, the Eagles look for a two-goal edge. Watch yeah. for the switch in the in the middle here. Oh, Rourke's coming out on the midfielder. It's a sophomore, Allen. Oh, here he is. <laughs> you know, Kylie off like a rocket here on the clear. The 5'8 senior down the middle. As Lorendo has had a hot stick. Skip pass. Oh, no. Set up Dumont. Long pole thought about it. Instead goes back door and then a denial. Shot batted away low as McCullough. Able to wave the wand there to keep it a one-goal edge for his team, 13-12. Now the Cardinals trying to force an error on the ride. You hear a collective groan out of that sideline. They oh, like nice what they play. see as they force the turnover in front of the home sideline. A lot of excited BG players down there congratulating the turnover. Yeah, uh, Lorendo with a tenacious ride attack there. Yeah. BG Ride has forced now a couple of giveaways in this third quarter. Yeah, and that's what we're used to seeing. They, they, they've been very aggressive all season uh, on their ride. And Dumont oh. trying to tie this one. Sent it upstairs a little too high. It's backed up, though, by Lauren Dow behind the cage, so BG will keep it. And again, in pursuit of the equalizer, trying to even the game at 13. Young with a spin. Scored two goals back in that second quarter. Junior nowhere to go. Finds his classmate Dumont. Ooh. Lorendo. Behind the cage, comes near side, draws a slide. Pass taken there by it is. Dumont. Extra feed for Young. Shot on the run. Denied. Yeah. Oh, that and went in. That yes, went in. it did. Off the ricochet. It bounced over the goal line and then back out. The eagle eyed official was right there to signify that it does indeed count. We are tied at 13 with just over two minutes to go in this third quarter. I love lacrosse balls with backspin. It's like, uh, you know, uh, uh, your approach shot to the green. You get a little backspin on it, and it's exactly what happened here. You hit the uh, goalie, hit the turf, and went in and just popped right out again. And uh, good call there by Steve Small, the official. Young with his third goal. Been a good quarter for BG. As they have outscored BC High since halftime, 5-2. to two, To even this one up. Cardinals searching for their first lead 
since just over a minute gone by in the first quarter. Remember, they struck first with Connor Bouvier. Just 65 seconds in. BC High tied it a moment later with Will Emsing's first of seven today. That was at the 845 mark first quarter. And BG Sense has come back to tie it a couple of times, a few times. But they have not held the lead, Roger, since the opening minutes of the game. Minute 47 here, we've got a timeout down on the field. Our broadcast brought to you by Beals Insurance, locations in Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance gets you the price and quality coverage. It's right for you. Visit BealsInsurance.com. Also by MG Sports Fundraising. That's fundraising made easy. MG Sports Fundraising is the official fundraising partner of Friday Night Lights New Hampshire. Visit MGSportsFundraising.com. Start raising money for your team today. Buy New Hampshire iPhone repair. It's done while you wait, and it's back by their lifetime warranty. Now with six locations in southern New Hampshire and on the seacoast, visit NHIPhoneRepair.com. Also, buy the New Hampshire Tomahawks. Showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NHTomahawks.com and also girls.NHTomahawks.com. Dot com by Spectrum Monthly, powerful local advertising solutions. Find out more at SpectrumMonthly.com. And finally, by Roger Howe Real Estate, part of the Bean Group. Email Roger tomorrow, <laughs> not today. Leave him alone for the rest of the weekend. But email him tomorrow, Roger at rhowrealestate.com or call 603 247 1583. Nick and Ask this with Roger Howe. Glad you could join us. A battle on the border between two of the best programs in New England. Perhaps the best teams in Massachusetts and New Hampshire colliding here. And to nobody's surprise, we're dead even with less than two minutes to go. Third quarter, 13 apiece. Yeah, wow. Uh, BG really came out storming in that uh, third. Uh, or we're still in the third, but, I mean, came out right out of the uh, gate. And... Um, they're holding their own at the faceoff X again. Uh, they're they're coming uh, coming up on that. So uh, give uh, give the Cardinals and the coaching staff some credit here. Uh, still got to figure out that M Emsing uh, uh, thing. Uh, we'll watch him closely here. <laughs> Easier said than done. The senior seven goals today to lead BC high. And they, he's on he's on a short stick now. He's got a short stick on him, and Rourke is with the midfielder. That's young. On M saying the two are pushing a little bit yeah. away from the ball. This may be the face guard we were talking about uh, earlier. Yeah, you know? he's, that's the definition of a face guard. He's yeah. right yeah. in his face with the back to the ball. Yeah, I think the coaching staff, Luke, Luke Soames is the, oh, nice goal. Yeah. Well, that, Roger, may <laughs> be the other side of the strategy, right? It takes yeah. away a potential slide. And as a result, we see the goal there from the sophomore, Luke Allen. Yeah, yeah, and ex exactly. Uh, you and I were, were discussing that at halftime, and I wanted to make mention of the fact, and I didn't, but uh, that's exactly what you give up. But give uh, Luke Solms, the uh, defensive coordinator for the uh, Cardinals, along with Coach Cam, uh, some credit there because they, they were seeing what we were seeing up here in the booth was they were trying to isolate Emsing on the crease. So take your shorty and just face guard him. But good play by Allen, yeah. not, nonetheless. Seen Allen involved today, a couple of assists. His first goal comes here with just over a minute to go, third quarter. And it's the biggest one so far as it puts the Eagles back out in front, 14-13. Yeah. Here's Emsing. That's Rourke back on him. Spin move's going to free up the senior. He'll go behind the cage, looks out in front of it, but the pass is off target. Tried to hook up with the athletic Hayes McCarron. But McCarron couldn't pull it in. The Cardinals get the turnover they want. They get the clear they want from Young. And now Gabor, ready to operate, looks over his left shoulder at Coach Cameron, who's got something in mind here for the final 35 seconds as Bishop Girton looks for the tie. Meanwhile, Coach Craigwell roaming the BC high sidelines, trying to direct the defense, waving his arms. Down to 25 seconds. Cardinals in no hurry, Roger, as they look for the final shot. Exactly. Young to his left. Short pass taken by Kylie. Back to the top of the box. Bouvier back to Kylie. Down to 10 seconds. Off the screen. The senior reverses direction. Frees up Gabor. Thought about nice. the shot. Gonna fire on the run and score. Connor Gabor with his third. It comes with six seconds remaining, and we're tied yet again at 14. Again, repeated statement. Timmy Kylie. 
is the guy that makes this play happen. Again, he gets slid to. He doubled. He got doubled up and still held back and got the ball over to Gabord. And Gabor, excuse me, yeah, Gabor, uh, nice face dodge yeah. in the midst of traffic yep. and still gets a great shot selection off. Vasquez with the win. Shot on the run, swallowed up as McCulloch handles that one easily. And that'll do it for the third quarter. Bishop Curtin trailed at halftime. They come alive in the third quarter. And we go down the stretch even yet again, tied at 14. The battle on the border concludes on the other side. Do the Cardinals complete the comeback? Or will BC High leave the state with their 15th win? We begin to find out next. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week, presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Well, we've got a classic brewing here in Nashua. 14-14 as we head towards the fourth quarter. Nick Anastas, Roger Howe with you. It's our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week. It's presented by Beals Insurance, two of the best programs in the region. Going after each other here on a Sunday afternoon. This game serving as... Kind of a final tune-up for both of these programs before their respective state tournaments. Bishop Girton Roger has come back now five times this afternoon to tie the game. They led very early 1-0. Trailed by as many as four on a couple of occasions. Trailed 6-2 and then again 11-7. Found themselves down 11-8 after a high-scoring first half. They come back, win that third quarter. And here we are tied with 12 minutes to go in regulation. Cardinals and Eagles all even at 14 apiece. Yeah, great quarter for the uh, Cardinals, and they need to start it off strong right here. Right here. McDonald initially won the faceoff, but lost it out of his stick. Poked away from behind. And the Hofstra commit, Colin Rourke, has it for Bishop Girton. Going to send one skyward near side. Taken by the pole, Finn Moran. And now it's Kylie who brings it all the way across the 50 for the clear. And Bishop Girton is in business. Looking for their first lead since the opening minutes. Hoping for their 13th victory of the season. A chance to improve to 13-6. and six, Which would be the best mark in Division I. With less than a week to go in NHIAA regular season play. Here's Gabord near side. Oh, right yeah. to the cage. And score number four. It's a big one as it puts the Cardinals out in front, 15-14, with less than a minute gone by in this fourth quarter. Okay, let's get this uh, replay up because look at the hand position of Gabord when he releases this ball. He's a righty, and he just twists over at the front of his body, not quite Canadian, but a halfway Canadian-style uh, type shot to go over the goalie's right shoulder his strong side so he's the goalie's seeing a look that's going to come uh, uh, to his weak side but the ball goes on his strong side great selection put a little touch on that one it looked yeah. like as well big time a little feather at home meanwhile mcdonald sophomore has won more than he's lost today at x for bc high gets a big win there and now the eagles find themselves in unfamiliar territory 14 and one on the season they've led for the most part wire to wire 
through the first three quarters. Again, trail briefly 1-0 in the opening minutes, but now with just over a minute gone by in this fourth quarter, they find themselves in search of a response here, trailing by a goal. They're going to try their hand behind the cage with Maroney. Nowhere to go and back up top. If you're just joining us, the story, at least for BC High, has been the play of senior Will Emsing. Six of his seven goals came in that first half. Meanwhile, Maroney won't get that off. Hit a body. And then it bounces right to Canaway, who's got himself the clear along the near sideline. That's not Canaway, rather, but Noah Guerrero. Sophomore getting some rare playing time and getting a round of applause from his teammates as he hits the sidelines. Smart. Good clear there by the youngster. Yeah, and I was just about to say, uh, you know, get get a, a fresh set of legs out there. And uh, we've seen a lot of clearing from the uh, midfielders uh, this year. Uh, and, uh, yeah, get, get some fresh legs and hustle it over to the uh, 50. Just over two minutes gone by, fourth quarter. Bishop oh. Girton oh, 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 oh. on a back door, dropped initially by oh. Bouvier, but recovered and put home. <laughs> Connor Bouvier scored the first goal of the game. The final goal before halftime, and he's got one here early in the fourth quarter. As the Cardinals' attack continues to roll, BG has now scored three straight. They lead by two, 16-14. And again, the shot selection by these two teams today has been exceptional. He gets the goalie moving to his right or his left side, and Bouvier parks it belt side, far side. Love it. Love it. Both teams have shown a lot of patience on attack, too, Roger. You see the maturity of these two teams on full display. Meanwhile, Zeman, Zeman has yeah. given his team a lift. Been the second face-off man today and has found some success. A big win there, and the Cardinals hoping to keep the momentum train on track with now three minutes gone by in this fourth quarter. Yeah, when you can do that uh, by bringing the fresh Fogo out and uh, win a face-off like that, that really helps out. Apollo and uh, his game as well. Cardinals behind the cage, Lorendo. All right, watch this. We haven't we talked about Timmy. He's not on the scoreboard today, but he's about due. Here he is, Kylie. Yeah, he goes low. <laughs> Got it. Able to sneak it through the five hole in the wraparound. And the senior celebrating with his team as they've scored now four unanswered to take a three goal lead and it's jubilation on the home sideline right now wow you know and and uh, the cardinals generally spread out their scoring across the whole roster their starting roster at least uh and in this particular case timmy kiley has been a big part of the game off the ball uh and away from the uh, apples and goals but here he goes he's uh deserves that Another face-off win for Zeman. The Riviere commit gets rid of it to his left. Cardinals thinking initially maybe a transition goal there. Instead, they'll pull it out and now work the perimeter here. With three and a half gone by, fourth quarter, a chance for BG to go up four for the first time this afternoon. Wow, and then Zeman got a huge hug by Paulo Vasquez as he came off the field. Two back-to-back -back wins for Zeman. You got to love the uh, sportsmanship and the uh, relationship those two guys have. Yeah, Zeman the elder as a senior. Vasquez, who's been the starter most of the year as a sophomore. Zeman, as we know, going to Riviere, and it's like the Raiders getting a pretty good Fogo. Four minutes gone, fourth quarter. Now, Roger, what, what's the strategy here if you're Bishop Girton playing with the lead? Do you stay as aggressive as you've been, or do you... Maybe look to work the clock a little bit more. Oh, absolutely. You're up three goals here, and there's no fear. You guys have got the momentum. You keep it going. Yeah. You keep it going. Eight minutes left. Hey, let's go. Young. Got the bigger body, Donovan Babka, on him. Now behind the cage. Lorendo trying to swim away. Babka picks him up on the switch. Yeah. I mean, as a coach, I was... I was the same way. I mean, why let off the pedal, you know, at this point? You start playing conservative or try and, uh, you know, manufacture the clock, with a, you know, for the win. Man, you're, you're not letting your horses run. you got to let them go here. Well, the Cardinals appear to be in no hurry on this trip. It's already taken over a minute off the clock. Five minutes gone now 
and Coach Cameron's going to call a timeout. Yeah, and you know what? This is okay. I mean, there's a difference between managing the clock and not being, you know, not going to the goal, but also being patient and waiting for the seams to open up so yeah. that you can run something. And I think that's what this timeout is all about here. I think it's a good idea as well to make sure that your players are all on the same page, right? You want to exactly. make sure that everybody's got the same goal in mind and how to get to that goal here over the final 707. Exactly. I couldn't have said it better myself. That's the way you want to play it from the Cardinals standpoint right now. They're well in control of this game uh, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a point in time where you want to possess the ball and we've talked about this many times in these better games that we've done, like the Exeters and the, and the uh, you know the BGs and the Bedfords and and other games. You don't want to allow the comp the opponent to start running the ball in transition and change the pace of the game right. the way it's been going for them. And they've just simply managed this game from the fourth uh, start of the fourth quarter. And thanks to Zeman and, and Vasquez to uh, allow them the opportunity to do that with possession. Well, it was BC High who kept BG at arm's length in that first half. As we mentioned, they held a 6-3 lead after the first quarter and an 11-8 lead at halftime. They were led by Will Emsing, who some, Roger, consider maybe the best player in New England. He certainly looked like that through the first two quarters, had six goals at the break, but the momentum seemed to switch in the third quarter. Cardinals got a little better at the face-off X, the attack a little more selective, and as a result, the Cardinals climb out of a four-goal hole to tie this thing going into this fourth quarter, and that momentum is carried over here early in the fourth as BG has outscored BC High, 3 nothing in this quarter. So still a lot of time to go. Over seven minutes remaining in regulation. But right now it's BG in the driver's seat here in the Battle of the Border, 17-14. Well, we did see uh, the Cardinals start to face guard uh, Ensing, or Emsing, that is. Uh, but the, the best way to defend against Emsing is just keep the ball on offense. Keep it away from, keep it away from the BC High offense. And they've done that. Five, think, five minutes in, they've got three goals already. And that may have been the message in the Cardinal, Cardinal huddle from longtime head coach Chris Cameron. They've had it at this end of the field now for almost two minutes, Roger. Yeah. And this is what you're going to start seeing out of the Eagles. They're going to be very – that's a hold. That's a hold. That's Look a out. hold. There's the flag. That's the bigger defender who sent Kylie for a ride there. You're going to see the Eagles being a little more aggressive, and this is probably not a bad penalty by the Eagles because it gives you a gauge on what they're going to call and what perhaps the defense can get away with mm. uh, because he held that kid for at least five yards before uh, he hauled him down. The penalty's on Jack Pine, another college commit on his way to Bowdoin. Pine, one of the bigger players on the field either way. Threw the smaller opponent to the ground there, and that's the technically fourth penalty we've seen yes. against BC High, the first since halftime. Correct. And it comes nearly midway through this fourth quarter. And look what they're doing with Bouvier, or excuse me, um, uh, Gabord. Just pulling out, and going to go five on four here and make him go into a box. Interesting tactic. This is Gabor near side. He scored three today for BG. So is Bouvier. Here's a low shot that won't end up on the cage taken by Kylie. All right, it is backed up, though, by the Cardinals. All right, they killed that penalty, Nick. Back to even strength. Wide open. Shot. Knocked aside by McCulloch. Loose. Oh, nice Scooped play. up by BG behind the net. It's Lorindo. Oh, he got whacked in the head. It's a long pull. Babka right in his face. Lorando does recover. It's pulled back out deep on the far wing. Kylie with a step shot. Yeah. Run. You better believe it. That's not Kylie, but Bouvier, and that's number four for the senior. The Holy Cross commit. Keeps the momentum rolling for the Cardinals. This BG has now scored one, two, three, four, five in a row to make it 18-14. Well, listen. This 
should be a man-up goal because there was so much confusion out of the Eagles on this restart from the uh, ball going out of bounds uh, that uh, that uh, the Cardinals found the seam very, very quickly for Bouvier on yeah. that far side. Good movement. Cardinal attack has really looked good in the second oh. half. Could have They've been now scored there. five and answered, and that's the longest run either way of the afternoon. BG up by four for the first time. That also equals BC High's largest lead from back in the first half. Yeah, and I, I think uh, McDonald is just gassed. Uh, that Fogo coming off the field just now, uh, very dejected. Uh, he had a clear advantage in the first he half, did. but taking on two guys on the other side for Bishop Girton. Yeah. Different story here in the second half. Down to five minutes, fourth quarter. BG. Open across the finish line for their 13th win of the year. And, I mean, we've had 36 face-offs in this game so far, and I don't think anybody but McDon McDonald has taken them for the Eagles. Yeah. That's a long day when it's uh, 70, 75 degrees and, and, and no cloud cover. Long day even under perfect conditions. It's been yeah. impressive either way for the sophomore McDonald. Meanwhile, errant pass sends Dumont scrambling towards that far sideline. He does take it on the bounce, waist high, and now makes a move to his right. Again, BG in no hurry as they continue to grind the clock down towards the four-minute mark. And I got to tell you, the, the BC high defense looks tired right now. They look tired. They've been on this field more often than not, this end of the field, yeah. more often than not in the second half. You, you can see look, Coach look at that. Well. Shot there from Dumont is wide. It'll stay with the Cardinals. You can see Coach Craigwell down there all the way at the 50-yard line at the head of the visitor bench. He sees something he does not like trying to convey the message to his defenders. Yeah, they're getting beat. They're, they're getting beat. Babka was left in the dust on that last dodge. They're going to try and double the ball if they can. Two men behind the cage for the Cardinals. They'll clear it out now. Yeah, to his left. Oh, yeah. Oh, you bet. <laughs> That's Kylie <laughs> saving the good stuff for the end of the game. How about that shot? A tough angle, a bouncer, and a 19th goal for the Bishop Girton Cardinals is now up on the board with 3.46 to go. Watch Charlie McCullough, the, the Eagle uh, goaltender. He's directing traffic because they're going to double up and way too late. Timmy Kylie is way too fast, and as McCulloch turned his back, to direct that traffic, Timmy made his move and he had basically had an open net. 19-14. About a 5-0 quarter in favor of the Cardinals and six in a row dating back to the tail end of the third quarter. Yeah, wow. Ground ball, that's Lorindo. It's coming down the middle. An advantage for BG, but they're okay without taking a shot. That was actually Zeman who came up with the ground ball, the Fogo. And now he gives way to the attack unit here with 3.20 and counting remaining. Coming up after the game, full recap, stats, highlights, analysis, out of town, scoreboard, all the good stuff here <laughs> coming your way immediately following the game. Well, I'm going to leave uh, after the whistle because clearly my analysis of the game at the very beginning being a single goal game <laughs> is just, just well, uh, proven me completely wrong. I I'm not sure anybody <laughs> expected this here. Ooh. The late run from Bishop Girton of six oh. unanswered. Meanwhile, things are getting a bit chippy after the whistle. Yeah. As I think you can expect here. BC High really with their backs to the wall, running out of time. Trying to do what they can to force a turnover. Coach Cameron is going to call a timeout. That's the second and final timeout charged to the home team. And now, of course, the officials, Roger, need to keep an eye on some of that chippiness that may or may not spill over right in the closing minutes of a game with increasingly it looks like this, this verdict is in stone. You can't have something spill out of control, so to speak, in the closing minutes. No, and I, I got to tell you, I give the officials in that particular play sequence there at the very end a lot of credit because I would have thrown, uh, there were clearly two infractions there. There was the slash, and then after the whistle, there was a slash. Um, and uh, it, 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 they didn't throw the flag. And in the spirit of the game and, you know, not looking like homers and all, whatever else you want to put throw into that little blank spot, um, 
smart move by Coach Cameron to call a timeout here and just diffuse that on his own. Yep. Another Bishop Girton supporters. They've turned out today. They make some noise behind the home sideline, pounding on the metal bleachers here, shaking the aluminum. And who would have thought that they would have been – now, we still got three minutes left, but they've shut the Eagles out here in, in the, fourth, the quarter. fourth quarter. Yep. I mean, not even a shot on goal, I don't think. This was a 14-14 tie to begin the fourth quarter. And again, the overall string of goals here, the run, the ongoing run for BG is six unanswered. Yeah, All just right. watch them to rag the ball a little bit here. Yeah. Yeah, now you can start to manage the clock. Of course, getting to that 20 mark might make a statement, too. Big statement, I think, either way. Yeah. Has been made here by Bishop Girton. Well, well, the Eagles get what they want. They force a turnover out of the timeout. And now they look for the clear here with 240 remaining. Going to have to hurry, trailing by five. As they seek oh, their first it. goal of this oh. fourth quarter. That's Emsing, a rare mistake for the senior who has played so well today. Never quite had that one in his stick, and it's back over to the Cardinals. Yeah, and that's a critical, critical mistake. This is Alex Dumont, the long pole. Outruns three defenders there for the clear. And the Cardinals are back in possession, trying to work this clock down to two minutes. Yeah, Chance to improve to 13-3 and three if they can hang on. Yeah, you can see the whole coaching staff on the Eagles bench just put their hands on their knees after that turnover. Unforced error. Kylie going to run away from Pine. And now Again. go back towards the net. Rebound shot, and there is magic goal number 20. Kylie with a hat trick in this fourth quarter. The senior celebrating with his teammates. Lost his balance there, but that's okay. And right now the Cardinals high-stepping into the end zone, so to speak, a 20-14 to 14 lead on the board. Yeah, this defense is gassed. They are, they are done. Uh, there's nothing left in the tank. And, yeah, this is a smart timeout by the BC High coach. Uh, you can just see, you know, their whole long pole contingent out there is just worn right out. Uh, and uh, this is what the Cardinals do so well. Uh, and it starts at the face-off X, as we said year after year after year about this team. If you can possess the ball, you can control everything. And as long as your offense and your defense and your clears and your rides are all executing and doing their job, this is what happens. 20 to 14, seven unanswered by BG. Six of those in this fourth quarter. And again, a statement win. In a lot of ways, again, the out-of-state record had not been kind to the Cardinals. They challenged the best of the best really every year, but started the campaign with an overtime win against Hingham, 7-6, to six, but then a loss against Staples. Of course, they're not only considered one of the best teams in New England, but one of the best teams in the country. Yeah. Cardinals gave them all they could handle. 11-10 was that final. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the... Lobsided, if you want to call it that, loss came against Archbishop Stepanak of New York. 13 to 10 was the final there. They play St. John's Prep very closely last week, 12-11. And then what's looking more and more like a win today over BC High. They've got one more to go, Roger, next week at Acton Boxborough. That'll round out the regular season following an in-state game against North on Wednesday. Yes, yeah, and Act Acton Box Pro is up there as well. Yeah, uh, very uh, highly ranked team, um, number five in Massachusetts according to the Max Preps exactly rankings. Exactly, they played Exeter two weeks ago, I think, and uh, m my son uh, Brandon, who's on that staff, as I've mentioned, uh, said that they're they're not quite as sharp as their record shows. Although Exeter did lose that game, they were they were tight with them. Meanwhile, some reserves are on the field. For the Cardinals, as Coach Cameron looks to get some guys some playing time here over the final two minutes. The Eagles force a turnover. Pass, though, is knocked down. That's Rourke. Got a piece of it. And it's still up for grabs. A lot of bodies in the high slot trying to control that one. This one is still loose. 
And now the herd heads towards midfield here with a minute 15 remaining. And it's still up for grabs. It's rolling along that far sideline now into Eagle territory. Big hit by Pine is going to draw the whistle, and this one eventually ends up with the Eagles as we're now down to one minute remaining here in the fourth quarter. Bishop Girton erasing a four-goal deficit in a big fourth quarter here in which they've kept the Eagles off the board. Taking control of this one running away, 20 to 14, as we now hit 45 seconds remaining. Cardinals again force a turnover. They'll get the clear they look for. And now it's a game of keep away here for the final 40 or so seconds. Trying to get out of trouble. This is Michael Ponto, the sophomore attack. Lost it. Marshall Rice hurries the other way. Oh. Chapman is denied by Murphy. One more save for the junior in cage. It comes with just under 27 seconds remaining. Able to stop that one from up close. Murphy has played well. Oh. This one goes off the crossbar. Sharp shot there from Maroney. Rolls out of bounds into the visitor's sideline with 15 seconds remaining. Boy, if that isn't an, an example of the pipe being the goalie's best friend, I'm not sure what else is. <laughs> I mean, with seconds left to preserve the shutout. Looking for that fourth quarter goose egg here. Oh, that's Two a ward. seconds, quick shot. Won't happen, and that'll do it. The Cardinals are going to celebrate. They're going to get a standing ovation from the Cardinal fans as well. And look out. A little bit of a collision there in that celebration huddle, but everybody okay as the Cardinals jump up and down out in front of the goal. They capture their 13th win. They do it going away. Seven straight, six in the fourth quarter. They keep BC high off the scoreboard in that final frame. And it's an impressive victory here, one that's going to resonate throughout New England, 20-14 to 14 the final. Yeah, good, good, uh, good way of describing it, Nick. Um, what a turnaround in a 12-minute quarter uh, from the first 36 minutes of this game where it was neck and neck. BG pulled it forward and just did not stop, and they absolutely dominated the BC Eagles in that fourth quarter from, from start to finish. It was, BC didn't even show up. I mean, they, they barely had uh, anything going at all in their direction. All right. We're going to recap this one in its entirety here in just a moment, along with stats, highlights, and analysis on a town scoreboard as well. All that and more on the other side of the break. BG winner over BC High, 20 to 14. You are watching our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week, presented by Beals Insurance. Our broadcast today, as it always is, is brought to you by Beals Insurance Agency, with locations now in both Bedford and Londonderry. Whether you need home, auto, or business insurance, Beals Insurance will get you both the price and quality coverage that's right for you. Just call 603-471-9999 or visit BealsInsurance.com to request a free quote and start saving money today. Again, that's BealsInsurance.com. Hey, I'm Chad, the owner of New Hampshire iPhone Repair. We're New Hampshire's most trusted and affordable repair shop for your iPhone, iPad, iPod, and even Android needs. Don't worry, we're affordable, reliable, and we back our parts with a lifetime warranty. And do you know what the best part is? No, what? We can repair your phone while you wait. I know, that's why I'm here. Oh, I know, Mrs. Green. Here's your iPad, good as new. Bring your phone into New Hampshire iPhone Repair today. The New Hampshire Tomahawks promote the highest level of club lacrosse competition, not just in the state, but in the country. Looking to get recruited? Director Chris Cameron keeps an open dialogue with the nation's top college lacrosse coaches. Over 400 New Hampshire Tomahawks alumni have played at the college level, including the ACC, Big East, Big Ten, Ivy, NESCAC, NE10, and more. New Hampshire Tomahawks coaching staff has over 100 coaches, including current high school, varsity, and college coaches. The Tomahawks offer training for players of all ages, clinics, camps, and leagues, along with spring, summer, summer, and fall elite teams, so play with the best. The New Hampshire Tomahawks, showcase and development for college lacrosse. Visit NewHampshireTomahawks.com and girls.nhtomahawks.com.
How can you reach your team's fundraising goals at no risk and no cost? MG Sports offers a variety of products to make your team's fundraiser a success. Their products include tickets and discount cards to hundreds of local businesses. MG Sports now is a digital platform where athletes can raise funds in the comfort and safety of their own home. So become another athletic program like Bedford, Goffstown, or Memorial that sets fundraising records every season. MG Sports, fundraising made easy. Visit mgsportsfundraising.com to start raising money for your team today. Are you thinking of selling your home? Well, now may be the time, given that spring is here, the market is hot, and interest rates remain at all-time lows. It's time to call Roger Howe, a licensed professional realtor with the Bean Group. Not sure what your home is worth? Roger will provide a market analysis for you at no charge. With 12 years' experience in residential, commercial, leasing, and investment properties, Roger knows your local market. So contact Roger Howe of the Bean Group today. Buy local and save big. For over 26 years, Spectrum Monthly has been providing great local offers from businesses in New Hampshire and Massachusetts. Delivered to your mailbox every month. Spectrum is chock full of savings from your favorite businesses. From local restaurants and retail stores to entertainment, fitness, and home improvement services. You'll have easy access to thousands of dollars in savings, including exclusive offers for Spectrum readers. Every month, enter our readership contest for a chance at winning cash and local gift certificates. Spectrum Monthly. No one brings you better offers. Well, the Cardinals celebrating along the sidelines. Their 13th victory of the season comes over out-of-state opponent BC High by a final of 20-14 to 14 here at Stello Stadium in Nashua. Nick and ask this along with Roger Howe. This one got off on the right foot for the home team. They scored with just over a minute gone by. Connor Bouvier pulled the trigger and gave his team a 1-0 lead. BC High responded just a few minutes later. Will Emsing. The Tufts recruit, not in the game at one, a little over three minutes into the contest. Face-off man, sophomore Shane McDonald answered one or added to that uh, eagle attack with a goal of his own. His lone goal came four minutes in. That gave BC High their first lead. Didn't last long as Connor Gabor scored one of four this afternoon. His first came midway through that first quarter and tied the game at two. Then BC High got their wings underneath them so to speak, because they scored four straight. M. Singh with two more during that stretch. Cooper Chapman and Patrick Maroney chipped in as well. One of those goals came on the EMO. And BC High held a 6-2 lead with just over three minutes remaining in that first quarter. And then, Roger, this became a theme. The Cardinals scoring in the closing seconds of a quarter. Jacob Karen, with 10 seconds to go, lit the lamp and brought the home team back within three at 6-3. Second quarter, momentum continued for Bishop Girton, Brady Dumont, Caleb Young, Caleb Young again. And that meant we were tied at six with less than four minutes gone by in the second quarter. And as we know, Roger, it's a game of <laughs> runs. BC High, well, they would string three more together. Chapman, Emsing, and then Maroney. Nine-six at that point midway through the second quarter. Dumont second, brought BG back within two at nine-seven. And then two more for BC High as they equal their largest lead, M. Singh, with back-to-back -back goals. 11-7 at that point with just outside of two minutes remaining in the first half. And then, as I mentioned, closing seconds favoring BG. Bouvier gets one with 12 remaining. And that brought us to halftime at 11-8 in favor of BC High. Third quarter, BG again gets off on the right foot. Aiden Lorendell, back-to-back -back goals in the first four minutes. Brings his club within one, and then Gabor second tied the game at 11 as we neared the midway point third quarter. Another two in a row for BC High. Chapman makes it 12-11. M. Singh seventh makes it 13-11. That was less than six minutes to go in the third quarter. And then BG comes alive. Dumont, Young, they both register hat tricks. With goals about a minute apart, 13-12, then 13-13. Eagles' Luke Allen gets his lone goal. With the 116 remaining in the third quarter. 14-13 Eagles at that point. And then again, in the closing seconds, it's Gabor with six seconds remaining. Ties the game at 14. And then it was a one-way train 
so to speak, in that fourth quarter as BG rattles off six more. End the game with seven straight. Gabord, Bouvier, Tim Kiley is heard from. Bouvier, and then Kiley scores the last two. And that's it. 20-14, to 14, BG runs away with it. They shut out BC High in the fourth quarter, and they improve now to 13-3 in NHI, NHI AA Division I best record. 13-3 and three with now a week remaining in the regular season. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't need to go to the club uh, this afternoon and work out. I'm exhausted. Uh, <laughs> the, the game was absolutely uh, one of the best games of the year, if not. Uh, uh, you know, the, uh, the Pinkerton and Exeter game earlier on this season, I, I said to you uh, in the broadcast after that, uh, was, was just a great technically skilled uh, uh, game uh, played by both sides. But, but you talk about a game of runs. We had three runs of three, two by the Cardinals, one by the Eagles. We had one run of four by the Eagles. And in this fourth quarter, which was eventually a shutout by the – Cardinals against the Eagles we had a run of six so this truly was a game where the Cardinals capitalized when they had momentum put the defense of the Eagles on their heels more often than not and it showed in that fourth quarter yeah they were they were dead dog tired and they could not they had some of the worst looking trail checks I've seen all season long uh, and you could see it from the coaching staff they were very very frustrated with that got to give some credit to the senior on his way to Riviere, Noah Zeman as well, Roger. He gave the Cardinals a much-needed shot in the arm, so to speak, at X. Vasquez, of course, got the start and I believe took the majority of the face-offs for Bishop Girton, but it was Zeman who I felt like, at least my amateur eyes saw, that he was giving them some much-needed face-off wins, particularly in the second half that allowed that momentum to continue. Yeah, and, and let's, let's analyze that for a second because I think it's a very, very – important key to the success of this game for the Cardinals. You go the first two quarters, and McDonald had a 13-8 to advantage over Paulo Vasquez. I don't think Zeman did a, a, a face-off in the first half at all. I may be mistaken there, but 13-8. to You go into the third quarter, it was an even match, 5-5, mm. mm -hmm. okay? You go into the fourth quarter, 5-2 BC, or B, BG over, over uh, McDonald, and the Eagles didn't have a backup for McDonald. They did not have another guy that could go in there. And when you put three runs together like the, the Cardinals did, you're not giving your faceoff guy a break. Right. And especially in the fourth quarter, six goals uh, within ten minutes. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's a huge, huge uh, key to this game and the excess of the Cardinals. Yeah. Well, we saw Coach Cameron down on the field a moment ago speaking with our friends in the media, Tom King of ETV and the Nashua Telegraph, and of course Joe Marshallena of NH-HighSchoolSports.com. I'm sure Coach is giving them some gold down there, Doesn't so Doesn't Joe always look like he's going camping? <laughs> Doesn't he looks like he's ready to go on a picnic or something somewhere. Well, he's always got that backpack and on. He, and he has that little notepad, yep. you know, like an old-time, uh, you know, gumshoe, but he, he is down there uh, with the backpack, and I, I bet he's got some beers in there. He is. Well, I don't know about that, but he is one of the best in well, the business. Well, he works in a beer store. He's, he's, a, he's, a, For uh, sure. he's a, uh, a beer aficionado from what I have uh, learned. Either way, my point being, before we got sidetracked there was <laughs> that we're going to speak with coach Cameron tomorrow in studio for another version of FNL lacrosse presented by the New Hampshire Tomahawks we'll recap this one with coach and get you set for the final week of the regular season as well Roger which includes two broadcasts coming your way on the boys side next week Tuesday will be on the seacoast for a division two matchup Winnicott is going to host Timberlane a lot of playoff in hosts Bedford at 5 o'clock Friday night on Senior Night. So that is our broadcast schedule coming up for the week. Again, FNL across tomorrow, Timberlane at Winnicott at Tuesday, Bedford at Pinkerton on Friday. Roger, your final thoughts before we say goodbye. Uh, just a great day of lacrosse here. Couldn't be better. Um, I need to get in the car and get home before the end of the Johns Hopkins game against Notre Dame. Uh, but... Uh, Hey, what a great uh, uh, win by the Cardinals here and putting a stamp on New Hampshire, the state of New Hampshire lacrosse, and letting everybody across all those ranking services out there know that uh, uh, we're up and coming. And, and uh, thanks to uh, Coach Cameron and his staff for putting that stamp on it. I don't know about up and coming. I think we've been here. 
for a yeah. minute. Yeah, well, so. I'd like to see a few more teams kind of make the uh, the top uh, rankings out there, but certainly, you know, uh, BG being in D- D- Division One and heading that uh, uh, is certainly plowing the road for the rest of us. Absolutely. All right. I want to thank a few folks here, including the athletic director, Mr. Brown, for Bishop Girton. Appreciate that. Of course, our friends over at ETV, including Pete Johnson, who's in the house, as usual, up here. And, of course, John Barron, coming back out of the woodwork. The master. Just to make sure everything's running smoothly. Dipped in behind the camera there for a moment as well. We appreciate that. And, of course, our two videographers today, Kristen Beals and Matt Beals, a dynamic one-two punch. Of course, it was all overseen and put directed put together by our director, Ben Beals, the man behind the curtain, back in the Beals Insurance Studios. And, of course, Steve Beals is our executive producer. For Roger Howe and our whole slew of sponsors, including Beals Insurance, NG Sports Fundraising, New Hampshire iPhone Repair, New Hampshire Tomahawk, Spectrum Monthly, and Roger Howe Real Estate. My name is Nick Anastas saying so long. Final score, final time, Bishop Girton 20, BC High 14. This has been a presentation of our Friday Night Lights New Hampshire Game of the Week, presented by Beals Insurance.